ESPN, the self-proclaimed worldwide leader in sports, which I don't watch, celebrated uh, Women's History Month yesterday with a segment honoring Leah Thomas, a biological male who swept the NCAA swimming championships last year while competing against women. So he beat the women. Well, ESPN's deliberate move to uh, court controversy comes even as just last week, the World Athletic Council, the governing body for track and field competitions, announced it will not, not, N-O-T, allow transgender athletes to compete against women in ranked international competitions, including the Olympics. Now, it is worth noting that when reporting this news, taxpayer-funded NPR felt it necessary to state that the ban comes, quote, I'm quoting from them, despite limited scientific research involving elite trans athletes, end quote. Huh, talk about March Madness. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more, Congressman Greg Stubbe, who recently had his bill, the Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act of 2023, advanced through committee, moving its way to the House floor. He serves on the House Ways and Means Committee and the House Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. He represents the 17th Congressional District of Florida. Congressman Stubbe, welcome back to Washington Watch. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Thanks for having me back. Well, it's good to have you back on. We've been uh, missing, have, missing having you on the program following your accident uh, earlier this year. Uh, how's your recovery coming? Everything's coming great. Uh, obviously, when you break your pelvis, it was one of the, the things that I had happen. It takes some time uh, for that to heal, but we're doing better every day. I'm walking without a cane or crutches and uh, getting around the halls of Washington uh, much better than I was a few weeks ago. So uh, getting stronger and healing every day, thanks to, uh, thanks to God. So are you going to leave the tree trimming to, uh, to others? Yeah, my wife, I think, wants me to stay off extension ladders with chainsaws, so uh, it's probably best to get a quote for uh, said activity in the future, but we'll see. <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're glad you're back and you're mending well. Uh, before I get to the discussion of your bill, which you've been working on for quite some time, it's now made its way out of committee, probably going to pass through the floor because states are passing these types of bills left and right. I, I, I want to go back to a topic. You're no longer on the uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee, but you were in the last Congress. And, and I want to get you to comment on the State Department refusing to release uh, information uh, to the committee as it pertained to the, uh, the the cable traffic that was going back and forth in the State Department during the Afghan withdrawal. Well, that just tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? You have Congress requesting information from the State Department that is required to give us information that we fund that department about a very public withdrawal uh, that, that found uh, 13 of our service members were killed in action because of the disastrous withdrawal that Biden put in place. And now they're stonewalling and delaying giving us that information. Uh, if I was the chairman, I would just uh, subpoena the information right away instead of requesting it. But Chairman McCall likes to be judicious and uh, respectful in his approach and requested the information in the hopes that he wouldn't have to subpoena the information. Uh, but this administration is going to try to delay for as long as possible us, members of Congress on the Republican side, getting the information as to how this withdrawal went about, uh, when they knew what they knew, why they made the decisions that they made, because we all know, the world knows uh, how disastrous it was and shows the weakness, not just in this administration, but this State Department. Now, you and I talked about this back at the end of last year before the 118th Congress was seated. Uh, your prediction was that the Republicans were going to take this administration to task in a number of areas. And, uh, you know, we're now, you know, almost three months into uh, this administration, into March, um, or into this uh, Congress. Are, are you uh, are, are you confident that we're going to continue to see the Republicans challenging the status quo and the path that this administration has been leading the nation down? Yes, absolutely. From everything from what happened in Afghanistan to energy, uh, this week we'll be focusing on H.R. 1 and energy 
And uh, we'll be we'll be bringing this administration to task on all of these issues. And it's good to get the documents first. But um, uh, hopefully, if even if they're not willing to do that, the chairman will subpoena that information on Afghanistan. And I hope again, I'm not on the committee now, but I hope the chairman intends on bringing in Mark Milley, bringing in blinking uh, Blinken. And if they're not willing to come in voluntarily, subpoenaing them to come in and ask them those tough questions about the withdrawal, the American people deserve the answers of what occurred. There's so many different things that you could ask them on uh, as it relates to the failures that we saw in Afghanistan. I mean, as we sit here today, there's still $80 billion worth of military equipment that's in the hands of a globally recognized terrorist organization, all because of the decisions that this administration made. Well, I will say that I've been encouraged by the fight that I've seen in the Republicans and the unity that I've seen as well, where they are standing together uh, keeping or, or are trying to call this administration to account. Now, let's discuss your bill, the Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act of uh, 2023. As I mentioned, this is not the first time you've introduced this legislation. Um, do the actions like those of ESPN show why bills like yours are so necessary? Yeah, 100 percent. And I'd and I'd remind your viewers because I didn't realize this at first uh, a while ago, but ESPN is actually owned by Disney. So if you see them acting in a woke manner and, and doing these type of things, uh, look no further than the policies that Disney puts in place for that. Uh, and, and it's exactly what we're fighting against. Uh, biological men should not be competing with biological women on uh, on the sports field of any sport. That's why Congress created Title IX uh, in the 70s, many, many years ago, to combat against that and give women an, an equal playing field to be able to compete with other women in uh, Title IX and collegiate activities and, and high school activities. And my bill would uh, level the playing field and only allow uh, biological women compete against biological women in Title IX sports. And if these schools refuse to uh, participate in this bill, if it were to pass, they're going to lose their federal funding. And I'm happy that Virginia Fox and the uh, Education and Labor Committee passed that out of committee. Uh, unfortunately, on along party lines, it shows you where the Democrats are on this issue. And we should get a vote on the House floor, if not this week, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and put the, every, every American should know where their representative stands on this very important issue, uh, not only to the women and girls that play these athletics, but to the parents that support their children and don't want biological men in the locker room with their biological daughters. Uh, Greg, you got to be encouraged by the fact that when you first introduced this uh, a few years back, you were kind of standing alone. You're like the only one, and there, you took a lot of flack for it. But now we've seen state after state pass very similar legislation at the state level. Well, and they need to continue to do that because of states' rights, um, because we, we'll pass this on the House side, I anticipate, at some point. Um, Speaker McCarthy is committed to meet it to have a vote on this and it'll pass the House. Uh, but we, we don't know where the Senate is because it's in Democratic control. So it is important for those states to stand up uh, for women's women and women's sports and pass that under a states rights type issue, uh, because we will. I do think we'll get it passed in the in the House on this side, this Congress. But I doubt that the Senate's going to take it up. So I encourage those states to continue to fight this fight. Let me switch topics. You brought this up just a moment ago. You mentioned H.R. 1, the Lower Energy Cost Act. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, we're going to do everything to combat exactly what the Biden administration is doing as it relates to energy. Uh, they came in and started ending domestic production of oil and gas, making it very difficult for oil companies to produce leases, which is why you've seen skyrocketing costs and energy costs. Uh, we're going to reverse that. We're going to open up the ability for domestic production of oil and gas. We're going to allow for the federal government to have leases on federal land uh, to, to basically reverse everything this Biden administration has done, which will aid the economy, which which will uh, decrease inflation because you're not going to see inflation as it relates to gas and oil and natural gas. I saw a statistic. Uh, I think it was gasoline's up 88 percent from the time Joe Biden took office. Uh, natural gas is up 50 percent. The numbers are staggering, all because of the decisions that this administration has made. And this bill is going to reverse all of that. I mean, it is it's not only a consumer issue for us as, as you know, in this tough economy where people are paying more for energy costs, but it's also a national security issue. Absolutely.
It's absolutely a national security energy. We shouldn't be getting our energy from Russia. We shouldn't be getting our energy from the Iranians or the Saudi Arabia. We should be producing it right here in the United States. And before Trump left office, that's exactly what we were doing. We were energy independent in this country. And that's the way it should be. Not just like you said, not just for economic reasons, but for the national security of our country. Greg Stubbe, always great to see you. Glad you're back in town and uh, that you're doing better. Glad to be back in the fight.